It was a revelation. I didn't just believe it, I knew it. And now I had to respond. And I walked to the front and I confessed with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, that He truly was born of a virgin, and that He shed His blood, and He did die on a cross. And I confess that I, God raised Him from the dead the third day. And I remember saying, I said, Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you take away my stony heart? Would you give me a new heart that I might love the Father as you? And so, in this revelation, I knew in my heart, the deepest part of me, the core of my being already knew by revelation that Jesus is the Son of God. Now in my mind, I didn't understand that part. I didn't understand how could this be because my mind was trained to oppose that. I didn't have the understanding yet, but I had the revelation. After I, I came to the realization of who Jesus is, I had a hunger and a desire to know Him and understand what I knew in my heart to be true. So I got a hold of a Bible. Someone gave me a Bible. So I began to read this word. And I, I would open it and I would read it, you know, as much as I could every day. And then I'd put it down or I might get tired or I'd go to sleep. But one morning, uh, the Holy Spirit came into the place that I was. And this river of God began to flow from the top of my head to the soles of my feet for three hours. And I heard a voice. And I heard words I never heard all my life as a Muslim. And this is what I heard. I heard the Father speak to me and He said, I love you, son. I love you, son. And He said it a third time, I love you, son. I never heard those words as a Muslim. And I all I wanted to ever be was a servant. But here was God saying, son. And when I got up from that floor about 10.30, I picked up the Bible. And when I opened it up and I'd look at the page, literally one page or passage at a time would leap off the page, go into my heart and explode. And I had understanding in my mind. Now I understood the very word I wanted to know, that I could learn more about Jesus and about God. And this scriptures began to be written on my heart. And for 36 hours, I did not put that Bible down. I did not eat. I did not drink. But for 36 hours, I read through the whole Bible. It was fast. I looked at the page. It would jump into my heart. I began to have understanding. And I realized that the Spirit of God, who is the author of this book, began to write this word on the very tables of my heart. And that began, that's when I really began to see a change in me. From that moment, I had a certain change. I had an understanding. It was as if prior to that, I would be drowning in water in my new Christian life. I didn't understand. I'd come up for a breath and then I'd feel like I'm drowning again because the circumstances, the challenges. But then at this very moment, when I had this revelation and I began to understand the scriptures, I began to, as if symbolically speak, walk on the water. And that's when life began to change. And every person I came in contact with in my life, they came to Jesus that they came to Jesus, not right away sometimes, sometimes two years, sometimes three, sometimes immediately. But I began to see this life go and touch other people's hearts and they began to respond to Jesus. See, revelation is like life entering into the heart of man. Light is illumination of that revelation of life in our heart coming into our understanding, coming into our mind. That's why this gentleman by the name of John one spoke about Jesus and said that in Him was life and He was the light of men. See, we have life in us that becomes a light. See, many religions have light. Everybody has light, which is knowledge and information. But light alone is not enough. It is the life of God that brings a light. And that is the difference for me. When I was a Muslim, I had light. But the light in me was darkness. But now I have the life of Jesus that is a light unto men, including myself, where I can see Him as He really is. But you know, it takes the Spirit of the living God to open our eyes. To my Muslim brothers, what I would say is this, that there's a cry buried deep within their heart. And God hears. Ishmael, who was the first person to ever be named before birth by God, means God hears. And God hears the cry of every Muslim heart. 
1.5 billion Muslims are in a spiritual wilderness with a cry that has been buried from their father Ishmael. And what's happening is God is about to awaken and answer the cry of the Muslim people and show them the well of living water that their heart thirsts for and allow them to see in this living water the face of Jesus so that they may know the Father who loves them and destined them as a people for in these times to come to a revelation of Jesus Christ. He knows the deepest desire and the deepest cry that even the Muslim does not know is buried so deep, suppressed within them. That is the cry that the Father wants to answer. And every Muslim cannot just be a servant, but have the opportunity to know God as Father. So the Father can impart identity, life. And the only way to know Father, God as Father, the only way to know God as Father is to know Jesus whom He sent. Jesus did not just become the Son of God when He was born of a virgin. Jesus was the Word of God who was with God before all creation. He is the same Word. The Quran calls Him the Word. He is that Word and He is that Word that became flesh. He walked and dwelt among us. This Word Jesus is the living Word that the Muslim needs to receive. And this Word is the one that can give them life. Jesus is the Word that pre-existed before all creation. He is the Son of God because He is the Word that came and out of the Father. He is the Word that proceeded with the Father. This is what I would say to a Muslim. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The beginning is creation. If we go back before creation, there was a time when the Word was with God. If we go further back, there was a time when the Word was in God. And then the Word came out of God. And that's why it says, And the Father gave His only Son, so that we might believe and receive Him and have eternal life. Isaiah 65, you know, the scripture says that, I, I, I reveal myself to even them that are not asking of me. I manifest myself to them that were not consciously seeking me. Then the next part of the verse says, I said, God speaking, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. I come from the nation of Islam. And I believe that God has a plan to reach out to people that don't even know Him. Because He's made precedent to know them. And I really believe the same thing is going to happen where the Muslim people, my fellow brethren, are going to have an encounter, a head-on collision with the glory of Jesus Christ. And they're going to have their eyes open supernaturally. And they're going to see Jesus like they've never seen Him before. And the cry that is buried deep in every Muslim heart, that has been buried for centuries, will be awakened. And when that cry is awakened, when that cry comes forth, we are going to see a mass of people. And we're going to hear a sound of Muslim people coming out of the wilderness, spiritually speaking, into a revelation of the person of Jesus. And they're going to embrace the Father, and they're going to find their identity, and they're going to find out who they really are, and that how God always loved them, had a plan for them, and intends to reveal Jesus to them.